This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at some adjustments now to do with inventory. So the previous adjustments in the last video were all to do with receivables, payables, bank, so your cash in transit and intra-company balances. Let's start thinking about profit. Uh, I'm going to ignore the inventory and transit adjustment first. I'm going to start first of all with your unrealized profits because you see them nearly every exam in some capacity. Uh, so, so what have we got? Uh, well, the issue that you've got is that if the parent and the subsidiary trade with each other, then they will be selling those goods at a profit. Now, the issue that you've got there is that if those goods have not been sold outside of the group, and are still sat within the group at the reporting date, will need to make an adjustment because that profit has not yet been realised outside of the group. Okay, so, so let's just look at this as a scenario, okay, and we'll come back to the notes in a moment. Yeah, let's look at the illustration. So it says there, P sells $100 of goods to S at $125 and S has not sold the goods on by the end of the year. Okay, so we've got P, uh, we've got S, and you have the group. Okay, uh, P has bought some goods in at $100, and we have then transferred them to S, at $125, okay, uh, so what you've got there is when you consolidate the results of the parent and the subsidiary, you are going to consolidate S's inventory, which includes $125 worth of goods that were sold between P and S. The issue that you've got is that the cost to the group is there as $100, isn't it? Yeah, we need to show, based upon the single entity concept, the value of the assets, the value of the liabilities based upon the single entity. So for the group, it's there as $100, isn't it? Okay. But currently it's in S's books and therefore being consolidated at $125. So what we've got there, is that we have some unrealized profit and that unrealized profit is $25. That $25 needs to be removed so we need to remove it from inventory so we're going to go through there and credit the inventory with $25. So that credit will reduce the inventory. Again, be careful. That adjustment is made on the group SFP. And then we just need to debit the profits. Well, the issue that you've got there is who's made the profit. Well, P has made the profit. S has the inventory. So we're going to debit P's profits because that's where the profit is held. So we're going to debit the retained earnings of P because P is... the seller okay there we go uh, if we go through and just note if we sell those goods you know if we've sold the goods by the reporting date we don't need to make a provision for unrealized profit because the goods have then been sold outside of the group and therefore that profit has been realized okay so we need to be careful we need to look at the inventory at the end of the year and we only eliminate the profit on the goods that remain unsold. If 
goods have been sold on, then there is no need to recognise a provision for unrealised profit because the profit has been realised, it's been sold out of the group. Okay. So what you've got there, uh, back into the notes, you've got the journal entry that we need to process. So credit the inventory on the group SFP. Debit the retained earnings and the key bit there is that we debit the retained earnings of the seller. Okay. Uh, so if S is the seller, uh, you were just working two, because that's where we see S's retained earnings. Just note that will be at the reporting date, okay? Uh, not at the acquisition date, because this profit for unrealized profit didn't arise at acquisition. It, it's a it's a trading transaction since. We consolidated, okay. So it's always at the reporting date. Don't make the mistakes there. And if P is the seller, you see the parents retained earnings, don't we? A hundred percent of them in working five. So we will need to adjust uh, working five. The group retained earnings, effectively reducing those group retained earnings. Okay. Uh, just notes. Be careful. In our example, there, it was nice and simple to go through there and calculate the unrealized profit it was just the selling price less the cost of the goods just be aware in our exam the examiner likes to use cost structures so when we're talking about cost structures we're thinking about markups and margins i'm not going to recap margins and markups we'll do that as we do the examples if you're stuck on them you need to go back into where you've originally learned them which will either be financial accounting uh, or is it there your management accounting paper? Okay, you should be happy with margins and markups now. Okay, if not, don't panic. We will revise them as we go through the questions. Uh, so that's unrealized profits. That is so 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 important. Make sure that you're happy with them. We see it so many times. The other one that we have is inventory and transit. It's very rare. I remember when it came up in an old F7 paper, it just threw everybody. Like, What's that? It's ridiculous. Uh, but what you've got here is it's similar to cash in transit. Uh, in that with inventory in transit, uh, one company has gone through there and sold the goods to the other within the group on credit. So they will have gone through there and they will have debited the receivables and credited the sales okay so they will go through that and have recorded the sale of the inventory however this is where the issue then arises is that the the goods that have been sold are on a ship on a boat uh, going from the parents to the sub or the sub to the parents and they're just floating on this boat in the middle of the atlantic or the middle of the pacific ocean they haven't yet been received by the purchaser now if that's the case we need to record that purchase don't we because that inventory isn't actually yet sat within the accounts of the group is it so we need to record the inventory in transit like we recorded the cash in transit but here what we're going to do is we need to record the inventory so we debit the inventory with the value of the goods that have been sold and we credit the payables okay that's the first bit that we need to do that's hard enough but then what you've got to be careful of then is once you've debited the inventory on the sfp you will then need to remove any unrealized profit because those goods have not yet been sold outside of the group, have they? They've just been sold from one entity to the other within the group. So we've recorded the inventory at the inflated price. So here it's saying, look, P sold some goods to S. P's recorded the sale, but S hasn't received the inventory. That inventory is in transit. So when we record it, we would record it at the 125 and credit the payables at the 125 but then 
we would need to remove that unrealized profit because it's not yet been realized outside of the group has it and then what you also need to go through and do is you will then need to also remove the intra-group balances because there's a payable in one set of books and a receivable within the other so you need to remove that equal receivable and payable wow yeah imagine that coming up within the exam uh really 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 tricky you might sat be sitting there think well yeah I, I can do that i can understand it you might not even understand it so don't panic because if it comes up in the exam give it a wide berth yeah move on there's plenty of other easier bits within a question to be able to get easy marks for as opposed to messing around with an inventory in transit balance if you're playing around with that you're wasting your time and you're going to fail the exam